come once again to discuss Welcome to another episode of Geeky Gentleman History Month. I am Sid Part 2. Joining me today is Mr. Steve, Mr. Baxi, Mr. Steve Baxi. Hello! Yes, yes. Uh, we are continuing Geeky Gentleman History Month, and this is, of course, the month in which we discuss the contributions that Geeky Gentlemen have made to history that have been ignored by Bias Educational System, except not at all. Uh, and we are doing character discussions this year on Geeky Gentleman History Month. So, Steve, what fictional character are we discussing today? Today, we are talking about the disfigured Western bounty hunter from DC Comics, Jonah Hex. Indeed. Jonah Hex is a really interesting character and kind of like one of those fan favorites who just pops up every now and again. I remember like he was just randomly in an episode of Batman the Animated Series and, and stuff like that. So... For those that don't know, Jonah Hex is a bounty hunter set in, you know, DC's Old West and... He's kind of like known as the greatest shot in the Old West, and, and he's capable of a bunch of other stuff. Um, but being in DC, he kind of like every so often deals with some just weird shit, and that also just makes him really interesting. Um, for some unknown reason, they gave him magical powers in the awful 2010 film, if you want our further thoughts on that, we actually did an episode on it, so you can go check that out. Uh, but yeah, Jonah Hex is is just one of those neat little little parts of the DC universe that really round the whole thing out and make it feel, you know, just massive. Yeah, yeah. Because um, Jonah in particular hops through genres and timelines and stuff so much. He's just, he's very versatile, and we do a lot of stuff with western characters out of context at dc like vigilante is another one uh depending on which version you're talking about um on the note of the jonah hex movie though as bad as that movie is it has one joke that was in the trailer that was in the movie that i will continue to love and is the first thing that comes to mind when someone tells me jonah hex um he's sitting at a bar and some jerk is like what happened to your face then jonah shoots him in the head and says cut myself shaving what happened to yours <laughs> <laughs> like that's perfect yeah that is a great jonah hex moment um i really really do like that if and honestly you know the jonah hex movie you could not have more perfectly cast jonah hex but yeah they wasted it um yeah. well him or him or thomas jane right josh Brolin or thomas jane I mean, Thomas Jane, I think, could do a great Jonah Hex, too, but Josh Brolin, like, you just think of, yeah. like, you just looked at him, and he was physically perfect. Yeah, uh, I mean, it's, it's the same level of getting Patrick Stewart to do Professor X after seeing TNG for the first time in the 80s. Yes, exactly. Um, one of the just the best cast... Like, how is it that some of my favorite casting for superhero movies often is, like, for some of the worst roles? Like, you know... <laughs> Kelsey Grammer as Beast. God, that was so perfect. What a fucking awful movie. Um, you know, for a long time, and, and you know, despite the, the allegations and stuff, I will say, Kevin Spacey would have been a great Lex Luthor. Uh, oh, that no, was just an awful movie. Um, yeah, I agree. Um, Batfleck. Yeah. Batfleck's yeah. another. He's great as Batman, but God, those movies. Henry Cavill plays a really good Superman. Now we know this, but... Still not in a good Superman movie. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, it's, just, it's, it's disappointing because they, they often get some really good casting and, and Josh Brolin was, was a great one. Um, yeah. But anyway, to, to center more on Jonah Hex. Um, so one of the things I really like about Jonah Hex, and, and it, I don't have a ton of knowledge about this character. I, my, my, the majority of my knowledge for Jonah Hex goes to the new 52 series All-Star Western which I thought was just brilliant. And, like, it, it annoyed me talking to people in the days of the New 52 who'd be like, man, New 52 really sucks. I'm like, but you, have you read All-Star Western? That's really good. Uh, 
maybe I would, but I'm just reading so much. But but you're complaining about how so much of what you're reading is bad. Why aren't you reading All Star Western? <laughs> um, so I don't have like a ton of history on the character, but I read the the New Fifty Two series and I quite enjoyed that. Um, and I've read him here and there ever since. And he's just one of those really interesting characters. Like the, you talked about the the moment from the movie. The moment for me that like really solidified Jonah Hex was um in the Justice League uh Unlimited or is it just Justice League episode where they go back in time? That's Justice League Unlimited. Okay, yeah, they go back yeah. in time and they meet Jonah Hex and like one of the What's your uh, thing? Yeah, yeah. One of the other guys that that's like an old Western hero or whatever goes, Man, I really wanted me one of them space ray guns. And Jonah Hex just goes, they jam. Because <laughs> he would know. <laughs> of course. <laughs> like, of course he's had experience with that. And like, you know, he just, he sees a pterodactyl and he's like, hmm. And they go, y- you don't find that weird? I've seen a lot of strange things in my life. <laughs> it's like, I just love how he's like the, the, you know, the consummate stoic uh, Western hero kind of thing. It's so perfect. Uh, like just the the tone of Jonah Hex is one of those things where it's like, if you could just it does not take a lot to get how to write Jonah Hex, and once you know how to write Jonah Hex, it's really hard to write a bad Jonah the he- Jonah Hex story. They did it, they do it on occasion, but it's really difficult. You well, just... and I I think part of the mechanic of writing a good Jonah Hex story is trying to stay away from the overly hellblazer style um magic ritual stuff like the movie does Mm -hmm. um the so i've I've only ever read like two big jonah hex things i read that 90s was it 90s it might have been 80s uh miniseries where he gets sent into a post-apocalyptic future and it's like mad max um and I read not All Star Western, but the thing Justin Gray and Jimmy Palmiotti did before that, which was um, some of the issues of the Jonah Hex ongoing in like the mid two thousands. But for comparison's sake, Hex is really bad and really weird, partly because it removes him from that Western context way too much, mm-hmm. and tries to add a bit more of like universal importance to that character that I think doesn't work. I feel like sort of the unimportance and and the simplicity of his storytelling is partly what makes him work in general. Um, But there is nothing distinctly powerful or unique about Jonah Hex. He's just Jonah Hex and he just doesn't give a fuck. Um, Yeah. Yeah. Like he's, he's a good shot and he just doesn't care. And that's, that's what makes him so like he, he's a good shot and end of the day, he wants to do the right thing. He doesn't want to be, you know, a bad person. Yeah. But um, he just doesn't care, like, who he hurts along the way. And if someone's an asshole, he'll do it. Like, okay, you ever heard this, like, someone joke about how it doesn't make any sense for the hero to ride away into the sunset at the end of a Western movie? Yeah. Jonah Hex, it makes perfect sense. That is oh, totally yeah. in line with this. Like, like, the joke is, oh, you wouldn't ride away at sunset because you're only going to get, like, you know, a mile or two away from town. And then you're going to have to stop and camp for the night, and that's dangerous. You'd be better <laughs> off staying the night in town. Like, no, it's like, that is totally what Jonah Hex would do. Jonah Hex would much rather be out away from people than have to be in town around them. Yeah, Even I mean, if it's, it's the classic dangerous. Shane problem, right? Of, like, he never wants to stay anywhere partly for the risk of killing the people around him. Mm-hmm. Um, I feel like the coolest parts of Wolverine get embodied really well in Jonah Hex. It's yeah. bizarre that Jonah Hex is not DC's Wolverine. I mean, I think part of it is, like, you can bring Jonah Hex out of his era, and, like, that was by far the most enjoyable part of the New 52 run when he ran into Booster Gold in the Old West and they were escaping a bunch of bandits and they fell off a canyon, and Booster's only resort was to time travel them both into the future, but he lost hold of Hex along the way, and Hex just walked around the, you know, present-day DC Universe. God, that was so much fun. There was one bad issue in the whole, in that whole section, and it was, it wasn't even, like, bad, it was just, like, skippable. Um, but God, Jonah Hex being in the, the modern-day DCU was so much fun. Like, 
he Jonah Hex shot mutants on Gotham Bridge. Yeah. The the gang yeah. mutants from Dark Knight Returns. That was great. Um but like you you kind of need him you need those to be the exceptions though. Otherwise, it loses its charm. I would not want the the long term status quo for Jonah Hex to be he was you know uh, an old west gunslinger, but he got stuck in the future. I yeah. would never want that to be more than like a story's worth of time. Yeah, I agree with that. Um, there's there's a really good story in the um, Justin Gray, Jimmy Pagliotti stuff um, prior to New Fifty Two, where Jonah comes back from a like a, a elongated stay in the present DC universe. Um, and like some kid keeps questioning him about like how cool the future must be. Uh, but Jonah Hex like never gets used to any one environment for too long. And so like, there isn't even like a sense of like a sense of like temporal longing. The guy just drifts and it doesn't matter whether that means home to home or era to era. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I think John, Jonah Hex is one of those characters that, like, doesn't give a fuck, is interesting and dark without being broody. Yeah, like, definitely. he's not upset about anything. He's just not a people person. Yeah, definitely. Like, one of my favorite um, things about the, the New 52 run is when it was coming to a close, they brought him back to the past. But while he was in the present, he met a girl, and she was, like, a super progressive modern woman kind of thing, you know? She was, like, bi, and, and she was, like, does that bother you that that I find women attractive? Nah. <laughs> like, just a perfect, you know, Jonah Hex response to women's lib. Um, <laughs> anyway, so, like, he he starts a relationship with her, and then when Booster Gold comes back, he's, like, I gotta send you back to your era. And she's, like, at first, she's, like, no, don't do it. And he's, like, nah, it's fine. It's all right. I'll go. And because he doesn't want to fight about it, it's yeah. like fine. She goes, fine. I'm going with you. He's like, y- you shouldn't. It's a bad idea. And she's like, no, I'm going to do it. And Booster Gold tries to talk her out of it. And she and he's like, Jonah, you got to try harder to talk her out of it. He goes, she's made up her mind. That's fine. Yeah. And so he Booster sends both of them back. And like the next issue, she gets shot and killed, and like not just like shot dead. She gets shot, bleeds out, um, because. It's just, you know, she's not as as malleable as she thinks. She's not as able to deal with these massive changes as she thinks. And Jonah Hex is kind of like a hard-boiled guy from back in the time when you needed to be. And so he's able to, like, you know, he's... he's it's not that he's sad. He's disappointed that she died. And he buries her in the desert and then just moves on. But like yeah, he's not he's not seeing her ghost everywhere or anything. And that's that's part of the interesting thing. Um the other thing is the face, where he gets um he gets his face burned and he's got like that disfigurement going all the way through. And we generally have characters do that because we, we, we generally have like that really annoying um media trope of disfigured characters become evil or they let that disfigurement be like the one fixation of their motivation even if they're a hero. Jonah Hex doesn't really have that. Like, his face is disfigured insofar as it doesn't look like other people's faces, and that's all right. It's cool. He just moves on. Somebody screams when he looks at him. He doesn't care. And I really like that. I really like how neutral and accepting he is about that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I like that he just kind of, like, lets everything roll off of him. Um, and that just makes him really interesting. Now, let me ask you this, because this is something that's come and gone over the years, and I actually quite like it, uh, even though it, it may kind of, you know, bother some people. How do you feel about Jonah Hex wearing a Civil, uh, a Civil War uniform, particularly a Confederacy uniform? So, the Confederacy, Confederacy thing is interesting because I don't think Jonah, as a person, has any sort of affinity for the Confederate States or even, like, slavery. I think Jonah is one of those characters that, more than anything, um, is just trying to protect his own, and so he gets wrapped up into the Civil War, and he keeps the uniform on, partly just because he doesn't care at that point. Like, I don't think his wearing the uniform is in any way an endorsement of the Confederacy, nor is it, like, reaffirming their values because anywhere Jonah Hex has that opportunity to inflict Confederate values 
like in a slave situation or something like that, he does it. Like there are stories in, in the Justin Gray, Jimmy Pagliotti stuff where like he breaks out of slave camps and shit like that. Mm -hmm. um, but I do think somewhere along the line there it needs to be addressed or maybe it has, I just haven't read it. Um, uh, even the... if he doesn't mean to offend people or care about the Confederate uniform, him still wearing it might be a problem that he has to deal with. Mm -hmm. And like it's it's come up like there have been people that saw him wearing it and assumed like he was a a southern um you know like clinger or whatever you want to call it and and they tried to you know fight him for that um and and you know he does what Jonah Hex does when someone challenges him to a fight he shoots them in the face um and you know it's it's interesting at the beginning of the new fifty two run one of my favorite things about that the reason I started picking it up wasn't because of Jonah Hex it was because it was Jonah Hex teamed up with Amadeus Arkham, which was really really fascinating and an incredibly unique idea that I never would have thought of um so in that you know in those first couple issues, Arkham analyzes why Jonah Hex is still wearing the Civil War uniform and that's really fascinating. Okay, I'm going to have to read that. I think you've told me about this before. I just still have not read it, and it's been like five years. I tell everybody about this. It's this, and it's uh, New Guardians. Greenlander and New Guardians were two of the best books from New 52. And it's not because they're like, you know, astounding works of literature or anything. It's just like, I mean, this is like really solid writing. This is fun. This is enjoyable comic booking. Right. Um, Speaking of enjoyable comic booking, one of the things that you really enjoy in comics as a medium as opposed to other stuff is one and done stories. Mm -hmm. Jonah Hex is one of the best characters to structure one and dones around just because nothing like drags on it at all. Mm -hmm. Even if you had a long standing arc, he's not the type of character to be bogged down by it. Yeah. Yeah. Like you can do like a 70 issue run with Jonah Hex and he's kind of got that Batman thing of Jonah doesn't change. Yeah. Like, if, if you're writing Jonah Hex to, like, evolve his character and, and get him to some kind of, you know, place of, of catharsis or whatever, I don't think you're writing Jonah Hex very well. Yeah. Um, like, you know, we, we talk about how he's, he's very stoic, he doesn't let things bother him. I think one of the brilliant things the New 52 did is um, when he he's in the future... He comes across an old traveling, like a, a traveling West show. It's like relics of the West kind of thing. And his girlfriend takes him in there. He's like, I don't want to be here. This is stupid. And they're on the tour. And then they come around the corner and there's a glass box with his petrified body in there. And that was the one thing that really bothered the fuck out of him. <laughs> and he, he didn't know how to wrap his head around it. He didn't know how it made any sense. Um, because he assumed he'd be in the future forever and all this other stuff. And it's just, that's a really, really interesting, um, interesting place to take the characters. Like, okay, what does bother Joan of X? And the idea of being, you know, dead and stuffed and mounted is the one thing that actually kind of got to him. Yeah. And I really like that approach. I, I, again, I could not recommend that series enough. I thought it was a really, really well done series. Um... But yeah, it's it's just it's interesting to to think of Jonah Hex as that guy. Um, one thing we haven't talked about, like you know, we, we've mentioned it, but not really gotten into the specifics of it, is Jonah Hex is one of those characters you know kind of came up around like I don't know when he was created, but I think he got popular in the eighties and nineties. Um, and like I think that... he's at least as old as the sixties or seventies because um, he was part of that post. Uh, comics code authority um cliche silver agey stories like when uh weird western tales came out and stuff like that and all-star western was an older title around that era and i think that's when he first showed up i don't know what book he first appeared in but it's from that era okay well it's, it's interesting to see that because he doesn't obviously get very popular until the 80s 90s and that's when you start to get in, like, the, the ultra-violence era of comics, right? Yeah. And, you know, it's funny, you and I were talking about uh, Batman Elmer Fudd before this, and the other Looney Tunes crossover they did was Jonah Hex and Yosemite Sam. And that one, on several levels, I did not like. But, like, one of the specific things about it was Jonah Hex is a very 
very violent character, and I was not okay with seeing that level of just, like, brutal graphic violence associated with the Looney Tunes characters. And it was it was hard to look at, you know, Jonah Hex, like, scalping somebody while Yosemite Sam is in the log cabin and whatever. Um, so, like, Jonah Hex being an incredibly violent character is one of those things where... I think it actually really helps inform and and make the character interesting as opposed to like a, you know, Todd McFarlane spawn thing where it's all there for the shock value. Yeah. Yeah. Um So neither one of us has read like much Jonah Hex, but I think part of the fun of the character is that you can kind of like jump in anywhere just cuz there's there's enough material out there. Um and I feel like a lot of the good outnumbers the bad just because there's so much of it as one done storytelling. Mm-hmm. Um like I, I know I started picking up the issues of All Star Western. I just didn't read it when New Fifty Two came out. And when I was reading the the Jim Justin Gay, Jimmy Palmiotti stuff, I started like in issue fifteen of that and just kept going. Yeah, it's it's a surprisingly jump onable uh character where like you know Jonah Hex doesn't really have a villain, you know, is he just kind of has the typical Western story of he'll go into a town and there's a bad guy there and Jonah Hex has to deal with it. Jonah Hex doesn't have like a, a super well long established canon and that it really helps him in a lot of ways. Like, can you imagine if there was a Batman that like we left the Joker dead after issue one and like we kept printing Batman stories for 80 years? Yeah, no, absolutely. Um, and I think Jonah Hex's lack of villains, because Batman grows and changes in stories and then just kind of returns back to status quo. You can do stories where Batman has to become a fundamentally different person in order to better himself. We just kind of return to where that is. Jonah Hex's lack of a coherent rogues gallery makes that sort of long-term reflection really hard, if not impossible. Mm-hmm. And so sort of like that stoic keep moving on not being anchored by setting or even villains. So even by like the conventions of his own story, help that characterization. Like there is no anti Jonah hex. Mm -hmm. What would that even mean? Yeah. Like, like any character that you'd introduce, you know, Jonah hex is the, the Frank castle type. He's not going to leave anyone that's antagonistic to him alive. This is the old West. He could get away with shooting someone dead over nothing. Yeah. Um, like, you know, yeah, the guy called you ugly. That's a dick move. Probably doesn't deserve to die for that, but what's anyone going to do about it? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I know he showed up in one of the episodes of Legends of Tomorrow, but I feel like at that point I was so checked out of that show, I don't even remember if it was a good episode or not. I might have to watch that just to see another live-action Jonah Hex. Do you remember who played him? Um... I don't remember his name, but he's the guy from... Shit, what is it called? Um, have you ever watched that show... Um, what is it? Finding Graceland? No. Uh, he's from that, that old 90s thing. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah. Um, um, I remember liking the actor, but I don't remember anything about his appearance in that show just because it's such a bad show. Yeah, fair enough. I, I don't know. I might just google that and watch that episode for the hell of it um go for it (laughs) thanks thanks steve now that i have your approval (laughs) (laughs) you'll have to check with me if they're gonna watch legends of tomorrow i mean i feel like that that's one of those things where i almost wish i you know bobby didn't work like third shift so because i would love to watch that show with somebody and just do like live commentary of it or something that'd that'd be so much fun yeah i'm just looking through um the wikipedia listing of jonah hex trades i kind of love all of the trade titles because they're kind of like classic western almost james bondy titles like bury me in hell counting Mm -hmm. corpses only the good die young guns of vengeance faces full of violence yeah right there's such kind of like classy western titles i love it yeah, I I really wish um, the Jonah Hex movie didn't suck because I would have loved for my dad to get into Jonah Hex because uh, he was big into westerns. Um, hmm. Does Jonah Hex kind of prove that westerns never really died? They just slowed down because I always thought it was dumb to say westerns died. Yeah, I guess. I mean, like, there's still western 
movies made is just they they stopped being what's hot, so they became more of a niche thing. Um, yeah, I mean, I it, it's not that westerns simply stopped being made. It's it's literally that super stuff like superheroes or sci fi movies in the eighties, um, or like political thrillers in the seventies took genre precedent over them. That's all. Yeah, and like I guess to branch out just a little bit, you know, you always hear people say stuff like, "Oh, the superhero movie is going to be the next western; it's going to die out." Superhero movie is much more diverse than the western. Um, yeah, like there's a world of difference between something like The Dark Knight and Avengers, and it's it's just night and day of like completely different type of movie. In, in every sense of the thing of the words just okay this person has a moniker before the word man and that's what they do um yeah <laughs> that's um, about the only common thread between a lot of superhero movies <laughs> <laughs> no that's true um the only other thing i can think of if people like want jonah hex stuff is he's in brave and the bold and that's a lot of fun. Mm-hmm. Oh, I really like the uh, the Thomas Jane short that they did. The oh, animated one of those see showcase things. Yeah, that was a good one. Yeah, yeah. No, that was really good. Um, that one's really good. The episode of animated series he shows up in is weird because it's literally just Ra's al Ghul explaining to him who Jonah Hex is. Yeah, it doesn't make a lot of sense. Yeah, um, it it has to do with like. Roz is a long forgotten son or something who's not from the comics, so I don't even remember what his name is. Yeah. Uh I like his cameo in Batman Return of Bruce Wayne. Oh yeah. That's a lot of fun. Yeah, it's just cool to see Batman versus Jonah Hex, you know? Yeah. Um And Batman loses. Oh, definitely, because Jonah Hex kills. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Batarang versus a six shooter is not much of a competition. Yeah, yeah. Um. Hmm. Yeah. I don't uh, know. I got. I. I don't have a ton. Uh, we can do recommendations real quick. Uh, feels fairly evident. I'm gonna say the new Fifty Two run is really, really strong. Uh, All Star Western. It's worth picking up. Uh, it's a yeah. crime that book didn't get more issues because it was really, really good. At some point, I'm gonna have to. Because my recommendation is going to be like the the mid two thousand Jonah Hex run, the Palmiotti Gray stuff, which is what All Star Western was a continuation of. At some point, I'm going to have to like pick the first volume of that for us to review, just because I'm curious. I never went back to the beginning of that. I'd I'd be down. Um, I should have picked it at some point in prehistory month or something. Uh, oh, well. I feel like that. I feel like that book started as more archy and became a lot more one and done when I started picking it up. But I'm don't know and it might be fun to read and see i mean it's got kind of like a through line but every issue stands reasonably well on its own if that makes sense that's fair yeah okay. that's good though uh okay let's let's go ahead wait hold on i'm confused how does time work okay yes we've got um, one more forward and it sucks yeah yeah we should like make a way for it to go backward i got a lot of things that i would i would like to redo same <laughs> mostly just times where someone said something shitty to me and i couldn't think of a comeback literally I've got yes. a lot of lists and i would just <laughs> like to go back and redo those moments um, Ian just wakes up in horror at some nice going that's what i should have said damn oh, it you have no idea <laughs> i do the same thing no worries <laughs> yeah yeah uh, okay so we do have one more episode of character discussions in history month so steve what will our next character discussion be? Ooh, okay. Who will our next historically tied character be? Um, I'm just going to go with what I know. Philip Marlowe. I, I have no idea who that is. You know, noir detective, hard-boiled, um, the big sleep, um, not Maltese Falcon, but like Raymond Chandler novels. I've never, ever seen any of these movies. What? Yeah. Okay. Well, maybe not that one then. Yeah, I'm sorry. Like, no, you're good. I um, have zero knowledge of the character. That's fair. At some point, I'm going to pick Big Sleep so we can watch it. Um, that that is like the best movie ever with with um, what's his name? Um, guy from Casablanca. Uh, no idea. Sorry. Um, I forget his name is shit. I can't remember. He's like he was. He's widely considered like one of the greatest actors of all time and shit. 
Um, that guy. But I can't believe I'm, I'm like one of the greatest name. actors of all time, whose name I can't remember. <laughs> <laughs> That's how good an actor Humphrey he Bogart. was. There it is, Humphrey Bogart. <laughs> That's fair. Okay. Um, let's see. Another historically tied character. Um, what were the ground rules for this again? Just to confirm. Either created at least a hundred years ago or consistently set in one era. So like the doctor and Ra's al Ghul don't count. Gotcha. Um, Hmm. Gonna flip through DC's wiki real quick. That's fine. Do, 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 do. Consistently set in one era or created a hundred years ago at least. Uh, well, we could go for another like mythological character. Yeah. Too. Mythological characters are good. Um, let me Google this real quick and see how old he is. I mean, I'm not going to be like a stickler. If it's 99 years and not 100 years, I'm not going <laughs> to... I mean, I, I'm, I'm sure. I'm just curious now. Uh, let's see. I just googled public domain characters because I'm thinking that will help me out a little bit. Okay, alright. Um... Cool. <laughs> hmm. James Bond be... doesn't count either because he keeps moving forward in time. Yeah, that's kind of annoying. Um, hmm. Damn. Who else do I know? I mean, I could this... probably get a guest to come on if you want to do like King Arthur. I'd be down for King Arthur. Okay, My sister me... used to read a lot of King Arthur. Let's go with yeah. King Arthur. Yeah, I'll see if uh, if. Ruben's around and if he can do an episode we might have to work scheduling a bit but we'll see what happens with that all right everyone thanks very much for watching till next time i'm the philosopher i'm the exile and we are your geeky gentlemen and we will be discussing things